Hello, my loves, and welcome back to Bahati Life YouTube channel. If you're meeting for the first time, my name is Jessica Alexandria. Welcome. And for those of you that are old friends and family, welcome back. <laughs> As you guys can tell by the title of today's video, there is so much that we need to talk about. In fact, today is the Cancer full moon. Well, today being December 26. 2023 it is the cancer full moon and i don't know about you guys but i'm really feeling like there is a fresh start in the air now cancer energy is something that i vibe with so i might be a little bit partial i'm cancer rising so maybe that's where the pieces of the puzzle are in alignment and where they're matching up but there's something about cancer energy that is so nurturing so supportive so accommodating in at some extent like i just feel like it's the the emotional advocate of the astrology chart like of all the zodiac signs it's a sign that's always kind of like looking out for everyone kind of checking in and asking like are you okay how are you feeling how are you handling all of these things and i think after the full year 2023 and all the years before that because we could talk about that i feel like a broken record with all the energies that's been going on lately especially with pluto don't even get me started or maybe get me started and we'll go ahead and talk about it later on in the video but specifically this year it's been very very challenging for so many i think one of the words that i have used to describe this year is uncomfortable there's been a lot of radical crazy change and it's necessary but it's it's uncomfortable i don't know another way to kind of say it and with this full moon happening in the sign of cancer right before we say goodbye to 2023 and say hello to 2024 it feels like the universe the planets the, the divine our higher selves are checking in again cancer energy and saying yo how are you doing after all of these things that have happened how are you handling it right now and let's go ahead and address that that let's go ahead and nurture it and let's go ahead and kind of say goodbye to anything that has been stunted, stagnated, anything that has broken down, say goodbye to it for our own highest and greatest good as we move forward into the new year. Now, that's a lot to go ahead and start this video off with, but I think it's very telling of the amount of information that we are gonna be uncovering in this week ahead video. So I'm gonna give you some time <laughs> to catch up with me, honey. Go get some coffee, go get some tea. Let's get cozy, let's let's really dive right in. We do have a sponsor for today's video, Ritual. Thank you guys so much for reaching out to me. Ritual Vitamins is a vitamin company that I've been working with, or taking, I should say, for over a year and a half now. I've actually been waiting to start their pre, pro, and postbiotics because I'm really interested in stepping up my game when it comes to gut health. And that has been something that's been on my radar for quite some time. I'm waiting because I was going to invite you guys to join me in the new year, really taking care of ourselves full body, full, full body. And the vitamins, the quality of the, your vitamins is top tier for me personally, along with a lot of combination of things. And we could talk about that in another video. You guys have to let me know down in the comments. They're generous enough to offer 40% off of your choice of vitamins. The link for that will be down below, but let's go ahead and give them a chance to say what they gotta say, for me to say what it is that I gotta say about their vitamins, because again, they're chef's kiss. In the meantime, feel free to listen, make yourself some coffee, some tea, get cozy, and then I'll meet you <laughs> in the future, and let's go ahead and dive right in. Now for the sponsor of today's video, Ritual Vitamins. Are you guys tired of trying to guess what are the ingredients in the vitamins that you're taking? Are you turned off by vitamin companies or vitamins, especially because of the aftertaste when you take them and then you burp that nasty after flavor? Are you kind of sick of vitamin companies kind of talking about health and well being, but maybe not being so transparent and honest about the ingredients that they're using in their products? I feel you and I'm grateful today for a partnership with Ritual Vitamins who prioritizes health, transparency, and does not compromise on quality. Now Ritual Vitamins prioritizes transparency first. They lay it all out in the open and display every ingredients along with its purpose, 
on the label. There's no secrets, just 100% honesty. The ingredients that they use are premium, which elevates your overall well-being because each high quality ingredient was carefully selected to prioritize natural bioavailable forms to ensure that your body gets the nutrients that it not only craves, but needs in order to thrive. Ritual Vitamins also undergoes very rigorous testing for purity and potency, something that they should be so proud of, and your health is way too important to settle for anything less than perfection. And as a Virgo who prioritizes mind, body, soul, and spirit, that is something that I can move in alignment with as well. So Ritual Vitamins are committed to sustainability, which I love, and their packaging is eco-friendly, which is important to me to find sources that are responsible to support our healthy planet. And lastly, there's no nasty additives, so you can say goodbye to artificial fillers, colors, and preservatives. It's simple and crafted with your health in mind. Now, many of you know that lately, almost my entire focus has been on my mind, my body, my soul, my spirit, my health, and my overall well-being. And a big part of that has been me returning back to intentional consumption with balance. Now, with this, it has what what this means for me is what I'm trying to say is that I'm very aware of what it is that I'm consuming, whether it be food, information, energy, it needs to be pure and something that is high vibrational and supportive of me. So Ritual Vitamins stood out to me from the jump. This was years ago because the quality of the vitamins that they're providing and what sticks to me lately, all these years later, is because the vitamins that I've been taking with them has actually been helping me with my overall health and my conscious lifestyle and diet that I practice now. And I particularly like the aftertaste of the vitamin and the way that they smell, which was something that as someone who took vitamins since I was a child, I never liked the smell of vitamins and I would literally gag. Rituals, vitamins, the, the smell of it from ginger to peppermint is just everything. So they were generous enough to provide a coupon code Bahati Life 40 for 40% off your for first order. I highly recommend the pre, pro, and postbiotic pills for um, regulating and overlooking your overall gut, gut health, something that I think is overlooked by so many of us, especially here in the United States. And if you don't, aren't vibing with that, or if you wanna add on to that, I highly recommend the multivitamins. That's just me though, of course I'm not a doctor. This is what I've really been liking. I take the regular multivitamins to the point where I've actually shared it with my partner and my family and friends. So thank you again to Ritual for sponsoring today's video and I'll see you guys in the next one. So thank you again to Ritual Vitamins for sponsoring today's video. You guys know I love you, I'm obsessed with you and I can't wait to start taking the pre, pro and post biotics. Very, very excited. I think it's only fair that we start talking about the week ahead with the full moon that's happening in the sign of Cancer. The reason why I think we need to start off talking about this full moon that's happening in the sign of Cancer is because again, I, I just have this feeling, I have this gut instinct looking at the chart and looking at everything. I feel like we're finally saying goodbye to some really old, antiquated, stagnated energies, things that have been lingering and things that are have been probably building up and mucking up in our own consciousness, in our own lives. Now, I understand that every single one of us, we have different stories, we have different things that we've lived through, we have different you know, points, we're different points on the spectrum as far as like how much we're enjoying the life experience from our work to our relationships, to our health, to fill in the blank, right? So with that, keeping all of that in mind, looking at the chart, I think, again, across the board, the main energies have been very tumultuous with Pluto, Saturn, Neptune, and Chiron retrograde. So at the time of the full moon in the sign of Cancer, again, this, this, this energy is very nurturing. It's very supportive. It checks in. It's an advocate. It reaches out. It lends a hand. It's very motherly. And the full moon is the culmination of all that we, like being able to see everything, all of it kind of coming together and showing us, okay, this is what you need to see. This is what you need to address. This is what happened. This is the truth. And that can be very emotional. It can be very triggering. 
it's interesting though because i'm as i'm looking at the chart i don't want to say that there's a disconnection or a separation but i feel like for many of us we have learned and really learned how to enforce boundaries and as emotional and as sensitive as cancer is it still is a wonderful time or it still is a wonderful zodiac sign to kind of stretch how we protect ourselves with our boundaries if you think about cancer it's actually represented by the a crab with that soft ooey gooey side with that hard external shell and that's not to say that we're walking around armored and super protective but maybe you can relate to that maybe you don't feel safe maybe you don't feel secure in certain parts of your life which i don't blame you looking at the astrological charts again Saturn transiting through the sign of Pisces, Neptune transiting through Pisces, Pluto in the final degrees of Capricorn. There's been a lot of breakdown of the things that create stability and security for us. And with that breakdown, nothing really seems set in stone permanent and things that we can rest upon. Taking that even a step further with Jupiter tra transiting through Taurus, Jupiter now retrograde, still retrograde, and Uranus transiting through Taurus. This has a lot to do with our foundation. The Earth that we like to stabilize ourselves upon is breaking down as we know it. And that can make us really question, like, where am I safe? Am I safe here in this relationship? Am I safe here in my job? Is this something that I still value? There's a lot of outside influences and triggers that can come in and make that question a repeating factor in the back of your mind, in your subconscious. A lot of these things, this energy, this question can even show up in your relationships. The relationships that you thought were like a sure thing forever, now it's like, I don't know if it's a sure thing anymore. You might have even seen the breakdown of relationships, connections that you thought were gonna last forever. For some of you guys, it's not people, it's not things, it's energy. For some of you guys, it could be this dream, this vision, this, this feeling of like promise and hope that something is going to come to terms or come to fruition. You may not necessarily have seen it. You're seeing what you are seeing is the dragging of this dream coming to culmination and come to terms. And it's not that you've done anything wrong. It's not that it's not going to happen. It's just all about divine timing. Now, I'm actually gonna take a break real quick and just kind of pivot for a second. I got a message in my DMs um, a while ago, but I just recently saw it where someone was just like, Jess, I just, I have so much hope for these messages and the things that is that you're saying, but I don't necessarily see it coming to fruition. Like I haven't seen it come to fruition. And she would, this person was very, very angry. And to them, to that person and to those of you guys that are feeling that way as well, I have to let you know that in our time frame, in our mind, I feel really called to say this to you right now. Um, in our time frame, in our mind, we oftentimes expect things to happen just like that. We think that if we set the intention, that if we manifested it, that there's a full moon that passed and then a new moon that passed and then another full moon and then another new moon, that within that time frame, whatever it is that you set the intention for, that it would have happened. These transits, they take years, years to finally fulfill, like fulfill their promises, years to fulfill their lessons, years to kind of bring everything full circle. And it's not something that I know it could be for you. You're like, Jess, I've been waiting years. It's been two years. It's been three years. It's been five years. I hear you. These transits, they they take time. They, they move very, very slowly. So it's not that your, your manifestations, your intentions, that they're not going to manifest or they'll never be fulfilled. It's just that even though you may feel like so much time has passed in the realms of astrology for the major overarching power planets it's not even a blink of an eye for them so i know that with your health i know that with relationships i know that with money issues it can really weigh down at your patience it can make you stop believing it can make you stop asking and i that's a very human that's a very human thing but try to hold on try to Fill your time with meaning and substance until all of the right timing kind of opens up and allows energy to flow through, okay? Now, back to this full moon happening in the sign of cancer, it's very important that, you know, as you're looking back on this year specifically, that you are looking for, I don't wanna say the lessons, but the what can you take from this right what can you take from this year what have you learned from this year 
what are some things that you thought were a sure thing and they kind of broke down or crumbled like sand in your fingertips or there are certain boundaries or dynamics that you have set up and that you've established and they came crashing down were they violated do they need to be like reinforced a little further what what were the contributing factors and we look at it not to judge but to understand and to maybe not uh, repeat those same energies moving forward into the year maybe look for help in helping us to process and to nurture and to support those parts of ourselves because again cancer this full moon the fact that we're ending this year so close to this full moon and sign of cancer for me is always going to be a sign a signal from the universe that let's look after ourselves let's look after our own let's look after the hut the home the places that make us feel safe supported loved cared for ten tended to all of that let's go ahead and look after that before we even think about branching out and giving in this great way before we even think about ch challenging and taking on the world and advocating for incredible change which is that we're needed right now what can we do right now to make sure that on the inside we're good here in the heart the mind the soul the gut <laughs> are we good here at the root okay because when we just I, I mean i want to start talking about astrology and start teaching it um, my plan is to get that going in Sacred Circle Tarot School, but for right now, we're doing baby steps. I'll send the link down for Sacred Circle Tarot School down below. There's so much, but in the nutshell, when, when we're talking about cancer, cancer represents the home, the hearth. The very opposite of that is our MC line, which represents career recognition and how we go out and give to the world. If the root isn't nurtured and supported, if it's not being poured into, it will always inevitably end up impacting what we're able to give to the greater whole and the impact that is that we're meant to leave here on earth. And even if we do make a big change here, even if we are making a big difference, the ability to be able to understand, to see, and to know that you've made that difference will be skimmed right over you. So you'll make this huge impact here on earth, but you won't feel like you've done anything. You'll go to your deathbed and you'll be like, I've, I've all of this for what? And that's why we go to the root, we nurture, we support. So before we enter into the new year, just try to do a quick check-in with yourself. Am I good? What do I need? Am I, are all of my basic needs being met? Are all of my emotional needs being met? What can I do to go ahead and to protect myself and to make myself feel a little bit more safe and secure, especially with all this cra crazy change happening around me and also within me? Now, that is the full moon that's happening on December 26th. That same day, that same night, Chiron, who has been transiting very, ever, very slowly through the sign of Aries, is moving direct finally at 10 10 p.m eastern standard time that right there is so significant you want to talk about new beginnings for those of you guys that don't know chiron is the wounded aspect the wounded healer within our chart it represents the part of us that is our achilles ten tendon if something hits it we just come crashing down tumbling down it's emotional damage or emotional sensitivities that we don't tiptoe around but we have to take into consideration if not, it will take us everything down, right? It'll take everything down that we've built in our lives because there's that soft spot, that wounded spot that needs a little extra TLC. And when Chiron has been transiting through the sign of Aries retrograde, it's been having so many of us revisit the idea of independence are, or over independence, right? How your relationship dynamics or how you your relationship with the world, society, community, family, what does those what does that look like? Do you overly depend on those relationships? Are people overly dependent on you? Is there someone or something that you can turn to? How does your identity, how has your identity been shaped up by these major power players in your life, whether it be your husband, your wife, your mother, your father, your sister, your best friends, your relationship to the world, to social media? How have they shaped how you identify, how you understand yourself to be your ego, so to speak? When Chiron has been retrograde, it's really asking you to kind of reevaluate those connections and reevaluate that relationship that you have with all of these things, with all of these different energies. If it's not healthy, then what happens when those relationships or that dynamic shifts, right? Because every single one of us, we're individually evolving right we're growing and with that that means that we might be growing in different directions we're growing away from 
our relationships are growing in different uh, directions when it comes to what we understand about ourselves. We're growing in our purpose. We're not staying stagnant, we're not changing. And as we change, what around us reflects back to us. Do we still have value? Do we still have worth in their lives? Do we think that we have value and worth? And now that Chiron is finally moving direct again in the sign of Aries, December 26th, the same day, of the full moon happening in cancer right before the start of the new year this is about that emotional energetic check-in that emotional check-in into the hurting parts of your of yourself for some of you guys you actually might have been really hunkering in in this year kind of cozying in self-protective it's your role probably has changed a lot i can totally relate to that some things that I used to be just like, this is a non-negotiable for me. I'm always going to show up in this one way. That is something that is a part of my character. And if I don't do that, then I could never, like, it's just things you would just never consider. And with this year and with Chiron Retrograde, it's just like, that's not, it really has you having to reevaluate why you felt called to show up in that way and how important it is for you to maybe consider to do different. Now, this will ruffle a lot of feathers. It has to. Maybe your boss, your coworkers, society, clients, friends, family, your partner, your best friend, maybe within yourself. Maybe you just are not okay with this new side of you or this new lesson that is emerging in your life right now. December 27th, literally 2.42 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, Mercury Retrograde, who is having us reassess, reevaluate, and kind of processing all these thoughts in our head is squaring off with Pisces. And this is a huge shift when it comes to boundaries, communication, and reflecting. For some of you guys, it's going to reflect some really toxic tendencies and traits of our conversations, thoughts, words, conversations that you have within yourself, within your own mind, things that you tell yourself, you're not even aware that you are listening to you, you know? Like, would you talk to your best friend like that? Why are you talking to you like that? With your work, some things might, the wires might be crossed. This is like double, double time because Mercury retrograde, we're really in the thick of it. We're not gonna see a break in Mercury retrograde until I think of January 12th or 11th, don't hold me to that. So when Mercury is retrograde, communication is super in flux there's communication breakdowns and when we square in neptune the actual planet of illusion and deception what do we have there we have a, a, a muddled mess when we have all of these energies this like new awareness and this shift that's happening within us in our lives what do we do you know what happens now what do you do you slow down what do you do you reflect what do you do you pause what do you do you try not to take things personal one of the main things that's really going to help so many of us this this week and as we end this year is to kind of look at the bigger picture. If we're spending too much time focusing on these tiny, de tiny details and trying to fix them and repair them before the start of the new year, we can find ourselves kind of getting caught in the web of all this different information and all these different changes. Sometimes if we take a step back and look at the bigger picture and, and ask ourselves, okay, what do I need right now? What do I need right now? Is this a yes? Is this a maybe? Is this, is this a hard no? Kind of like feel out the energies of things that you have said yes to and give yourself a lot of ample space and room to kind of shift and pivot as necessary and as needed. For some of you guys, the breakdown of your life or the breakthroughs that are happening in your life are kind of opening up doors for you to walk in even if it's temporary there's going to be some sense of temporary relief relief and it may not be forever but with mercury retrograde and even mercury scoring off with neptune it's going to be just enough to nurture and support you and keep your mind engaged for the time being while you 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 are getting your the bones of your life kind of set and and established and um set into order right? These are really interesting transits right now. It's almost like the energy is breaking down, like the, the vibes around us are breaking down. But at the same time, you're kind of seeing these little pockets of blessings and opportunity. I'm also seeing new interests and new passions and new conversations and new friendships and new connections being introduced into your life, even as these major things are kind of breaking down. Taking a step back and looking at the bigger picture, can you see the blessing? Can you see what's kind of happening here? Even if you may not necessarily vibe with it and agree with it wholeheartedly, can you kind of see that there's some type of 
synchronistic alignment that's happening here. Sometimes that makes it easier to kind of digest all of it than looking at this, this broke down here, this is breaking down, this is breaking down, and then I had this, and then I got this and this, taking a step back and looking at it like, wow, I don't need to see how everything is working out together to understand that there is something working here. There's gotta be something that's happening here and it's not just positive thinking, it's a fact. I wanna tell you too that on the 27th, we have the sun trying Jupiter retrograde and this is gonna be absolutely stunning. If, especially if we know how to balance with our boundaries because Jupiter is a planet of overdoing, overabundance, overexpansion. If I were you, what I would do with this transit is I would allow myself to get very idealistic in my dream setting. What I mean by that, you know what I just got a vision of? Mr. Megorium's Wonder Emporium. I think I said that correctly. It's about this older man, this older gentleman who was played by the actor Dustin Hoffman, who I love. He had this vision of this like toy land, I believe and he brings this toy land to life. I don't know, someone might wanna watch this movie. It might have some message and significance there for you because it's really interesting that that's the, the vision that, is that I'm getting right now. It's about having this like dream for yourself. Essentially what I wanna tell you now is there, there's this dream, this idealistic dream and vision that is that you have your, for yourself. This life that you might be delusional enough, and I put that in air quotes, delusion. You believe it so strongly that not that it has no choice what to happen, but it, it gives it a higher chance of happening. You know, the odds might be stuck against you, but there, but you have this dream, this vision, this, this, I, this idealistic vision for your future, for your life, what it could look like, what it could be. And I know that I said to maybe take away from these smaller details, right? And look at the bigger picture. That's another thing that I'm seeing for you guys is, looking at the bigger picture of what it could be, what you want your life to, to look like. That's another way to capitalize or to use this full moon and cancer to your advantage because it's allowing you to nurture and support that dream that ultimately will manifest and come to fruition. If the cancer, the zodiac sign cancer is the root here, the branches and the fruit are going to be Capricorn energy and the MC line and what it is that you, what fruits from us. When we're nurturing and we're tending to the soil, the root of our vision and our dream, sun trying Jupiter retrograde, kind of revisiting this big picture um, and having hope and almost being again, like delusional, like how could this happen for me? It's those steps that is that you take and we'll get there, right? As soon as Mercury is retrograde is over, then we then we can start putting down even more of the, the logs that are gonna help build the bridge to get you there. But for right now, let's go ahead and look at the bigger picture and start getting excited about 2024 or the rest of your life. It's up to you. I'm not here to I'm not here to tell you what they do. Having said that, my loves, I do wanna let you guys know that this is one of those weeks too that I don't wanna say it's gonna be um, kind of whimsy wait, that's not the right word, like wimpy, kind of like weak, kind of flimsy, right? Kind of flopping around. And the reason why is because Mars ruling our drive, our ambition is more, more interested in having a good time and enjoying itself than being more serious and set in stone. And with like this game plan, allow yourself to kind of vibe with that. You know, if there's work that you have to do for the remainder of this year, things that you want to complete, I just see you finding a way to do it in a way that's more fun. I don't see anybody really taking things very heavy to heart. They're just trying to have a good time. There's this mentality too that life is short. I want to enjoy it now. And when Mars squares off with Neptune, it's really even more harder to kind of be like, sit down, <laughs> like eat your carrots. It's like, no, I want your nuggies. Like, that's the energy that Mars squares uh, Neptune is giving uh, this week. So just go ahead and allow yourself, I don't wanna to say to indulge because there's definitely that energy here with Sun trying Jupiter. Just go ahead and allow yourself to maybe, I don't wanna say not take life so seriously, but be inspired to enjoy the journey a little more this week as we start the new year. I, I promise you there's gonna be enough seriousness in 2024 that you will actually appreciate the fact that you're giving yourself a little ample room and space to kind of breathe, to have fun, to not put so much pressure on yourself, to not put so much pressure on others. And let me tell you, if you're gonna put pressure on other people, especially with Mercury retrograde, I don't wanna say that they're going to snap. I just don't think that they will even take you seriously because everyone's mind seems to kind of be in the same space of, I'm gonna do what I'm gonna do regardless. Like, 
that's kind of the energy and I'm not mad at that. I'm really not. If you're looking for friendship partnerships, this is a wonderful time to link with people of old friends, new friends, and to start exploring those different communities, venture out and to find people like-minded soul spirits, especially when Venus enters into the sign of Sagittarius, December 29th at 3, 23 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's a wonderful time too, to kind of network, look for different social circles, expand your social circles, connect with your friends, connect with your community, make plans for the future with flexibility or get excited for your plans that are already set in stone for the near future, okay, in 2024. One last thing I wanna to talk to you guys about, we are ending this year with Jupiter moving direct finally in the sign of Taurus, December 30th, 9.40 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Wow, I've been like a broken record talking about uh, Jupiter retrograde and Jupiter, yeah, Jupiter being in the sign of Taurus. It's been real interesting, it's been tough. Why? Because it gives a lot and it exposes a lot in the sense of abundance. And I, some of you guys are like, well, why is abundance a bad thing? Well, abundance can be terrible if you are finding yourself spending a lot. If you have a lot of bills, if you want, if you need a lot of things, if you are making repairs on your home, if you're doing, those tallies tend to go up. They seem to be very unpredictable with Uranus also transiting through the sign of Taurus. It's almost like, here we go, another thing. So go ahead and look to see what Taurus rules within your chart. Everybody has Taurus ruling something within their chart. That's where you're gonna see kind of like where your expenses are, are increasing. You could be so um, enjoying of the process that you don't necessarily see it. Sometimes you look back and you're just like, whew, wow, like I didn't realize that I was eating so much salt. I didn't realize I was eating so much sugar. I didn't realize I was spending so much money on the roof. I didn't realize that I was spending so much money on Amazon purchases. It's, it's, it, it'll be different for everyone where this overabundance is coming through. But now that Jupiter is finally moving direct, even when it's retrograde, if anything, when it's retrograde, you, you kind of lose track of how much is going in and going out. It depends on what's, uh, what, you know, what, what's happening within your chart. But now that Jupiter is moving direct, you're going to have some level of awareness of maybe we should enforce a, a budget here. Go ahead and enjoy yourself, but don't get so relaxed in it that it becomes a problem later on. Um, for others of you guys, this could be the pursuit of knowledge, wisdom, comfort things, things that comfort you. For me personally, I can't read enough books. I'm really enjoying books lately. And mostly for me, it's psychological thrillers, which is a total deviation from what it is that I normally am about. I normally am reading books about astrology, or interested in topics of esoteric symbolism, healing, etc., etc. But lately, for me, it's been um, psychological thrillers and things that just allow me to kind of like get warm, cozy, and just be like, "Whoo! I don't want to leave the house," you know. So that's just me. All right, my loves. I hope that this was helpful to you. I really hope that this was helpful for you. I wish that I could pull every single one of your individual charts, like on on here but it's just it's just not possible it's not possible and i do have my calendar completely booked for readings right now into the new year i'm finalizing those readings from 2023 there's no way i'm going to be able to get those readings done for 2024 but i'm tr chugging through them um in the meantime you guys uh feel free to pull your own chart uh, if you would like to join Sacred Circle Tarot School, the community of like-minded souls and spirits who are studying tarot, diving into tarot, it's more than just studying tarot. It's more than learning tarot. We go so deep when it comes to energy, when it comes to change, when it comes to transition, when it comes to spiritual journeys, when it comes to awakening, awareness. Sacred Circle Tarot School, doesn't the name itself doesn't do it justice. It really doesn't. Um, we, we definitely go, we definitely go deep. There's a lot of like shadow work. That's one of the homeworks that we're working on r right now is a shadow work assignment, which has been really revealing. And, um, yeah, so that's something that you're looking forward to and you're interested in. I'll leave the links down below until then guys. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Thank you so much for vibing with me. I hope that you are well and I know that I will talk to you. I'm sure I'll talk to you before the end of the year, but if not, happy new year, you guys. Thank you so much for another year together here on YouTube and on Bahati Life Podcast. 
if you're tuning in there and I cannot wait for 2024. It's gonna be very good. I have a feeling it's gonna be a good year. It's gonna be an intense year. It's gonna be transformative year because we are in the season of that, okay? Like you guys know, it's not, like I said, it's not, um, this is not a quick temporary transit. It's been something that's been in the mix for quite some time, so. All right, my loves, I'm sending you all of my love now. Please go ahead and give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to this YouTube channel, or unsubscribe and resubscribe, that way you're getting notifications because YouTube is going through it, the, the entire platform, not just my YouTube, the entire platform is really going through it. So thoughts and prayers to, to YouTube, right? And Instagram, because it's we're in a season of change and transformation and they're feeling it too, right? So um, yeah, until then you guys, I'll see you guys in my next video, bye.